Hi, George here. Hope you're doing well. This is the quick and the dirty about high flow versus low flow oxygenation and everything's based upon inspiratory flow rate of your patient. So not to get into too much detail, but because this is the quick and the dirty, let's look at the patient's flow rate. Low flow systems do not come close to matching the patient's inspiratory flow rate. High flow systems do exceed the patient's inspiratory flow rates. Low flow systems are capable of delivering various FiO2s to your patient depending on how fast they're breathing and what you're setting them at. High flow systems always guarantee the setting of oxygen that you have going to your patient when the high flow system is set up appropriately and are also capable of low versus high oxygen concentrations as well. So let's look at the concept quickly of what oxygen or inspiratory flow rates are. Right now, when you're ventilating, you're taking a big breath in. You're generating inspiratory flow rate. So if we could give you a number, let's say um, number 20, let's say the inspiratory flow rate of the patient is 20 liters per minute. When you suck that gas in, it goes in at 20 liters a minute, which is a unit of speed. So if we're putting an oxygen device on our patient and it's running at four liters per minute, what's coming out of that device is 100% oxygen at four liters per minute. So if your patient's inhaling at 20 liters a minute, and the device is giving them 4 liters a minute, where the heck is that 16 liters per minute coming from? Well, it's coming from the room. Okay, That's how a low flow oxygen system works. When you're setting it up, whatever flow rate you have set doesn't meet or exceed the patient's flow demand. So because of that, you can't guarantee the patient a specific oxygen concentration, but you are administering oxygen at 100%. It's just not 100% of the concentration of that gas inside the patient's lungs because the majority of the gas that they inhale is still coming from the room so the FiO2s or oxygen concentrations are going to be low inside their alveolus. It's not going to be 100%. So they are getting 100% diluting or being diluted by the room air at 16 liters a minute that they're also inhaling at the exact same time. So the result the FiO2 is going to be kind of low. These low flows four liters a minute, etc. two liters a minute. You can only do that with things called nasal cannulas, low flow appliances. The um, bigger the device that you put on your patient's face for low flow systems, the higher the oxygen flows you're giving the patient. But there's still gonna be some degree of room air dilution. High flow systems on the other hand, when you're setting a high flow system up for your patient, what you're doing is exceeding this inspiratory flow rate that the patient is generating. So if you're setting a high flow system up like a cold nav, a blender, an aerovo, a vapor therm, or some other of those high flow systems out there, always set the flow rate higher than what the inspiratory flow rate of the patient is. And generally flow rates are anywhere between 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 liters a minute, somewhere in that area. So if you set the flow rate on your, on your high flow device high enough to exceed the inspiratory flow demand, your system will always work at a high as a proper high flow system. The other thing is, with the high flow systems, set the FiO2. On your low flow systems, you can't set FiO2 or concentration. On your high flow systems, you can set the FiO2 or the oxygen concentration that they're gonna get. So if you've got the oxygen concentration set, for example, to 50%, and the flow rate on the device is equal to 40 liters a minute, Every time this patient takes a breath in, they're never exceeding what the flow capability of the equipment is. So this flow rate will always be able to provide whatever FiO2 you want that patient to get. Plus the beauty of the high flow systems, they can also provide heat as well as moisture to your patient as well so they don't get that drying effect. So when would you uh, use one versus the other? Low flow systems are for your more stabilized patients that don't require high oxygen concentrations or high flow demands, high flow systems are for your patients that aren't as stable. They do require precise uh, oxygen concentrations to deliver to them because of the nature of their condition and they need that heat and that moisture as well. So that's the quick and the dirty about oxygen therapy, high versus low flow equipment. Hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, etc., please give me a, a shout, leave me an email or um, leave me a comment about the video. Thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't like it. Hope you have a great day. Till next time, this is George, out. Have a great day.